Greetings my dears, welcome to this video. I'm really excited to share with you some dark decks today. Uh, the inspiration for this video came from the, oh gosh, I want to say it in French, but my pronunciation is not going to be great. I was, I can't call it Oracle Door. I just, I just can't do that. Um, Oracle Door, that's my best, and I'm not going to say the name again. <laughs> Because it's okay as far as the pronunciation, but it takes work. Um, but what I love about this deck is it says on the side here, let me get myself out of the way, will it, will it show? I don't know. I can't tell, my dears, but it says black is the most essential of all colors. This is uh, Odalon Redon's artwork. And... Um, I think what it says on the back says a lot about kind of the energy with which I'm coming into this video. It says, Odalon Radon was a solitary child who sought out the shadows, bringing a wondrous world to life through art. He felt that black was, quote, the agent of the mind. In this carefully selected deck, inspired by the noirs of, or the noirs of Radon, we take a deep dive into the subconscious realms many of us choose to ignore or suppress. With added gold details offering optimism and light, we hope that Oracle d'Or becomes a companion on your journey. <laughs> See, I did it again. Um, I don't know if you can hear the wind howling. It's quite loud. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of the inspiration that I'm coming into this video with. I started pulling out some decks that I felt like were dark. Um, but there were a lot of directions that I could go in. I tried to focus on decks that really challenge me and take me to places that are kind of uncomfortable. Um, that may be a little bit confronting or may have some disturbing aspects to it um, that take me into the shadows and help me to explore in a way that's a little bit out of my comfort zone. There are some decks that I think do that but are a little bit more um, supportive and we'll talk about those um, in the second half of the video. But for the first half, I really wanted to focus on decks that I feel like are very, that really hold that deep, dark, dense energy and really call, like pull out some really intense energies from me. And so I wanted to start, let's start with this one. Um, this is a wonderful deck. And as the inspiration to this video, um, I do find it to be, somewhat supportive but I feel like the images are very um and the keywords as well it has some gold foiling as well it's very beautiful um but the images oh I'm sorry if you're not into spiders that was going to be really tough to start with but I think that maybe is also um information when it comes to how this deck works this card specifically means a lot to me because when I did my first um, reading with the deck, it it wanted to speak to me directly about um, my own willfulness and my own will and the ways that it gets in my way. Like, sort of like being strong-willed but not in the positive sense, in the way that you're kind of stubborn and you get in your own way. I feel like this deck is very straightforward. It's not, um, it doesn't coddle at all. As beautiful as it is, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't take a meandering path at all. It's very direct and tells you the truth about yourself and about your situation. It's not going to sugarcoat, but it's going to give you um, information and um, some direction on which way to go. So it's going to say, yeah, 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 this is the issue, but, you know, I guess if, if you do want to solve it, not solve it, but if you do want to address it, um, I'd take, I'd take the, that road right there. I wouldn't go that way if I were you, I would go that way. But, you know, do whatever you want, you know, it, it acknowledges your agency, um, and, you know, warns you of it as well. So, yeah, I find this deck to be very, very beautiful and very honest. And, um, yeah, it's kind of like tough love. But I would say, as far as this first half of the list, it's not, um, it's, it is more on the supportive side. I will say that. But as the inspiration for the video, I had to start there. 
Next, I want to talk about the Bibliotech Tarot. This deck is oh, so gorgeous. I um, got this deck from Kickstarter. Um, it is a, based on the title, um, a tech-based deck, um, but it's very, very dark. Uh, sometimes kind of disturbing. And the way that I have always seen it as it sort of has a lot to say about the human nature. I feel like it knows about human nature. It sort of understands what makes us us in the ways that we can destroy and annihilate. And so I feel like it gets me in touch of, with what I'm capable of and not in the good sense. It in some ways feels like it's an intelligence outside of humans kind of showing us ourselves, holding up the mirror um, and showing the dark sides of our nature, even down to the really minute details. Um, I've always said that I feel like the pentacle suit very much like they just seem like I'm not, you know, well versed on, you know, hardware and technology in that way. But the pentacle suit for me feels like these like chips like the physical structures that, you know, hold a, not hold, but the physical structures of a computer, um, like a human being, like the nervous system, the brain, like arteries, like things like that. And, but for, for me, it's more so, more so the brain and the nervous system and things like that. And I feel like the electrical impulses that um, make up a human. And so it kind of tells a little bit about um, what's going on in the brain but yeah this is the bibliotech tarot um i find there's like i don't know it's just it shows a lot of for me destruction and just i want to find this a very specific but like there's very few humans in this deck and when they are sometimes there is this sense of hope because they're usually children but like I don't know what to say I just I really love it and I find it to be quite challenging on helping me to see that like nobody is all good I mean we know that but of course nobody's all bad either but I think it's good sometimes to dig into those um, darker sides of what we're capable of to remember um, how to direct our energy and so for this next deck, I don't know why I just felt the need to shuffle. <laughs> it is the Hayworth Tarot. Um, I love this deck so much. I actually began to use this deck um, for reading a book called The House of Leaves. And this deck definitely makes me uncomfortable. Um, not a fly. I, baby, I said you're not welcome here. You gotta go. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know where I left off. Um, there's a discomfort in the deck, and I would just give a little warning. Some of the images here can also be quite uh, disturbing. Um, but yeah, I used it for this book called House of Leaves. And it's a book about a house being bigger on the inside than it is on the outside and the various, um, you might call adventures of exploring said house. And it's a very meandering and complex shifting narrative with a lot of form, um, the forms change, like there's, there's movement and change and there's shadow and there's growling and there's ash and it really plays with space time in a disturbing way where the reality which you thought you knew is not and 
so this deck for me encapsulates that process. I have had a very specific experience with it, but overall I think it, it really um, makes you uncomfortable and in a way that of course brings you out of your comfort zone, uncomfortable, and calls into question the ways that you're thinking and seeing the world around you. It calls into question your perceptions. It calls into question the life that you're living. Is this what you want? Is this the life that you have created? Or is it a life that someone else is has created for you? Um, yeah, I find this deck to be very illuminating, but it doesn't go easy on you. Um, I love the death card. I find this really interesting because death is usually, you know, it would make a lot of sense for this card to be all black as opposed to all white, but I think that's a great example of what this deck does. It calls into question what you have perceived death to be already. And for me, black usually is the void. It's all, it's everything. Um, you know, usually the void is nothing, but it's the nothing, it's the everything that is nothing or the nothing that is everything. Whereas white for me is almost this like existential nothingness that is not everything. It's just actually nothing. And it's sometimes like the, it's, it's the worst thing that I can imagine. Like just white. It's, it reminds me of that SpongeBob episode, um, where Squidward goes to that, um, realm it's like the future episode and he's there and he's like alone and it's like alone 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 and it's just horrifying <laughs> so yeah maybe that's a good word for this deck horrifying it gets you in touch with uh the most horrifying aspects of your perceptions and the things that scare you the most it doesn't do it you know yeah I would say, I was going to say it doesn't do it in a way that's like maybe too scary, but that's just my personal thing. It may not be the case for you. Um, I think that's another thing when it comes to all of these decks is that um, everyone's experience is going to be a little bit different. For me, the way that I approach these decks and the way that I approach the work, for me, it as uncomfortable as it makes me feel, it's very familiar. I can feel familiar like Odalon Radon. Um, like I seek out the shadows and I've done a lot of trauma work. So for me, sometimes even the most disturbing thing can feel quite supportive because I'm, I'm comfortable or not comfortable, but I'm, I'm familiar with going on those paths. And so for me to discover a new discomfort or to explore some resistance or fear is ultimately exciting because I get to see more of the world around me and within me. Um, yeah, let me know if that makes sense. Um, but that's how I feel. So this one, this next one is <laughs> one of the most, um, I would say uncomfortable, confronting, that's the word I'm looking for. One of the most confronting, this is the interactive cards. Um, these cards were developed with um, internal family systems in mind, or they're based on internal family systems, which is a type of therapy um, that, you know, if you know better than I do, Please leave it in the comments or correct me if I miss uh, describe it but it's internal family systems is about having these various um, oh it's very much like inside out there you go inside out the movie where there's these parts of you so that's when people talk about parts work it's talking about those various parts of you that are operating within you like an internal family that are you know each have their role in their acting in their own interest and in their own peculiar ways and the way that they interact affects you and all of that. So, um, 
yeah, it's an accessible and effective way, interactive cards um, are an accessible and effective way to give an image and voice to the sub-personalities within us called parts. Um, so because it's, you know, created to, it was developed to, you know, be worked with around internal family systems therapy, you know, it's made for therapeutic use, which of course would uh, lend to it being quite revelatory. But I do find, and I've talked about this in other videos as well, I find the images to be very confronting at times. Um, and, you know, I'm not always wanting to, or I'm not always, um, not wanting, but I recognize these parts of myself, but I haven't really interacted with them in this way. Like seeing them in image form can be really interesting and a little bit disorienting because you're like, oh, like I, I recognize but don't recognize that part of myself. Like I, I, I can see myself in that, but at the same time, we haven't really interacted like that. So it's like meeting, it's like, oh, I recognize you from somewhere. <laughs> Not always. Some of them is just like a hundred percent, but sometimes, and I find a lot of times it's very much like, yeah, I, I know you from somewhere, but let's get reacquainted and you know I get to co-create with these aspects of myself so I feel like it really straddles that line depending on the image that comes up and the sort of question or inquiry that you are taking with it um, it can be really affirmative or really confronting or both at the same time um, I think they require a lot of digging these images they require a level of presence and very much a safe container to explore them within um, which like I said makes a lot of sense as this deck was created um, to be used either within or around a therapeutic setting like these images can be so intense and just bring up memories and parts of ourselves that you know are buried and I think that's where where the digging comes in where you come, you, you, you welcome those parts back in to yourself, um, to be integrated. So, um, yeah, it's a very sweet at times, confronting at times, disturbing at times, um, deck, which, you know, you got to be ready for it when you come to it. So that's the interactive cards. Um, I wish I could show you all of the cards because <laughs> they're all really quite interesting. But that is that. Next, I want to talk about a deck that um, I always say is really like sometimes kind of creepy. This is the Alchemical Visions Tarot. It's it's really big. Like it's a big, big deck. Like I, I mean, the interactive cards, this is... I mean, I don't even know if that fully shows how big this deck is, but, um, so this deck is, is very much centered around alchemy. Um, but the images for me are very oof, uncomfortable. I, I know that's like kind of a common, it's become the word of the video at this point, but this deck makes me uncomfortable. It, it, something about the images, the way that they're collaged, just... I don't always like the way, like, look how this card is as big as my face. So, or my head. <laughs> um, something about the images, sometimes it shows, like, organs and, like, really old drawings of, like, um, just really strange happenings and faces and, and things like that. And so, yeah, like, it's, it's weird. And... It makes me uncomfortable and so what I feel about this deck is that specifically when it comes to that feeling it is tr it is helping me to get comfortable in the uncomfortable the guidebook is really alchemy based and it's not very divinatory as far as you know what I've seen I haven't read every single entry but um, for the ones that I have read there's and you know as I've looked through it's not like this is what this card is telling you. It tells you a lot about the artwork. It gives you a lot of information. I mean, it's quite thick as well with very uh, small font, but you know, 
So it's it's very much based around alchemy. It gives you a lot of information around that particular to each card and talks about the artwork. Um, but it's not really there to sort of give you um, a simple answer. It's it's there to show you a sort of a tapestry of what we're discussing. Not a tapestry, a, you know, it's a collage deck. So it's giving you these various disparate images come together to sort of give you an image of the issue at hand. I feel like it also is kind of meta because it makes me also call into question the way that I'm reading the cards because I get so thrown off sometimes by the images and not thrown off in like a negative way, but because they, they conjure up such visceral reactions, then I have to then ask myself, okay, how am I going to read this card? Like, what am I going to do with this visual information? And so, um, it really, I guess it brings me into the moment and it calls into question what I'm going to do with this card which then I guess gets extrapolated into what I'm going to do with this information. And, you know, how do you want to approach this? How do you want to approach this, this picture? How do you want to approach this feeling and the things that are coming up for you? You know, it really it just like drags up some stuff. And so it gets me in touch with sort of my questions, my doubts, my, um, feelings of maybe even disgust, things like that. Um, and, it, and I feel like it doesn't really tie anything together at the end. Like I said, the guidebook, and which for me tells me a lot about the intention of the deck, um, which I haven't read the introduction in quite a while, but for me, you know, what is included and not included in the deck's artwork or guidebook tells me a lot about the intention and process and feeling, energy, you know, whatever behind the deck. It, it gives me an idea into its sort of, you know, I personify, um, I take a very animistic approach to my decks and, you know, all of the things that I experience. Um, it gives me an insight into the energy and the entity of this deck, which is that it's not here to answer questions like that. It's not here to say, this is what you should do based on this card. So while it's very much Rider Waite Smith, so you can read it that way, it for me it it opens the world to me and it leaves it open for me to then do what I want to do with it. Which I think what makes what makes that so uncomfortable is that, well, what if I don't know what I want to do and you've brought up all this stuff and like what do I I, I don't know. Like I, I don't know. And like look at this fucking card. What the fuck is that? What is that? <laughs> like, genuinely, what what the fuck is that? And so, it, yeah, it has these, like, anatomical images, um, these, like, very strange happenings on the card. And so, yeah, it, it really opens up an entire world and just sets you free to do what you will with it. And that can be really, really, really frightening. And so, yeah, for me... It's a gorgeous, I mean, stunning deck. Like, there's no, no doubt about that. It's, it's very beautiful, very um, well thought out. The guidebook is so caring, but it's like that teacher that is just so far ahead of you that there is no, they don't connect the dots for you. And it's so frustrating. You're like, can you just, can you just tell me what to do? Just tell me how to approach this. But it says, here is all, here it is. I'll tell you what it is. And you, you decide, you decide what you're going to do with that information. It is all up to you. It is your life and you create it. So yeah, I find this deck to be, you know, everything that I just said. I'm not, I feel like I could go on and on and on, but yeah, that is the alchemical visions tarot okay the next and last deck for this section around decks that are a little bit more um like a lot more intense in their darkness and depth um is the 
Goetia Tarot in Darkness. I always for, I always like pull out the cards before I'm ready to show the show the box. I love this box. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of it's quite sexy. Like this deck is it's really sexy to me. I don't know. It's really nice. Um, but this deck very intense. Um, I actually want to shuffle it too. It is an all black and white deck. Very much like the bibliotech in that way. But this deck brings me to, I feel like, a place... It's it's one of... I would say one of the most... Intense and unknown um, feelings. So... It brings me to a place... That I'm unfamiliar with. Like a place where I don't reside there. This is a this is another realm and I'm sort of the odd one out as you know a human and but I'm welcomed in under some conditions it's a very um like it brings me to this secret place and I can be there if I agree to act accordingly so When I work with this deck, I always learn. I am a student. And it asks me, what do you truly want? And what are you willing to do to acquire slash create that? It makes me take action. I feel like it reminds me like, you're a magician, right? You are you're a creator, you're a witch, you you do magic, right? So act like it. Act like one. Yeah, it informs me, it impresses upon me, and I show up with a reverence. <laughs> and for me, this deck I would say like it feels like a circle of souls but it's not so much a circle because it's not like I'm at the center and they're like around me or anything but it's like this the collective energy of a circle of souls and like I said I always show up as a student and it is a place that has rules and requirements and expects me to take responsibility for myself and for what I say and don't say, for how I act, and for the magic that I do. Yeah, I feel like it's, 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 yeah. I'm definitely curious. Um, for those of you who have worked with this deck, I would love to know your experience with it. I don't often use it as a tarot, but I have. Um, I mostly use it to um, connect with the entities within. Um, but on both accounts, it has very um, strong expectations of me. And... Uh, I always have to prepare myself to rise to that occasion. And so, yeah, that's my experience with the Goetia Tarot in Darkness. Now let's take a little bit of a more light tone. Um, lighter tone. So for the next few decks, these are decks that I feel like are dark and deep, but have a more supportive, um, gentler... Uh, approach but you know still quite intense still you know not pulling any punches I try not to use um, language around like violence of like you know punches kick in the ass kick my ass shit like that like 
but you know trying to figure out the place for those for that language but oh yes this deck <laughs> is the dust to onyx um you know one of my all-time favorite decks um and as this first card will show you i find this card to be very i mean this deck to be very giving um it's It's a truth teller. It holds a lot of stories within it. Um, in the postures, you can feel the story. It feels like there's something, like the next deck that I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> it feels very much like the story that is within the body, the collective story that is in all of our bodies and it holds a lot of history. It feels, I don't know, the word conductor comes to mind. Um, a connector, it feels like it connects the past, present, future. It, it has quite a lot to say, but it's not going to just, it's not friends with everybody. It's available to anybody and everybody, but it's not friends with everybody therefore it's it's not telling the the secrets to everybody but it is here to you know share the stories to connect you to yourself and to um for me connect to lineage and ancestry and history but also to challenge um to challenge power and all of its interpretations and implications It is, it can be quite intense. It's funny because I feel very much like, like in the last deck, it, there's a responsibility, a big sense of responsibility when it comes to this deck. It's so beautiful. Oh, and there's um, spot gloss. On every card yeah that is the dust to onyx um what else can i say it shifts your perspective and it brings you into your body yeah that's that's what i was trying to say earlier with the stories within the body it really it brings you back to the body um and yeah, like I said, it, it very much feels connected to the next deck, which I'm going to just bust out now quickly. This is the Oracle of Initiation. This copy is a first edition copy, um, but and it's the large version. There is a tarot size version. I, I'm not sure if it's both versions are still available, but um, it is. It's it's an incredible deck. And for me, um, the more I dig into this deck, oof, I got it. I really, I really love this one. The question that comes to mind is, do you want to know what you're made of? Like I said, similar to the last deck. Who are you really? And what stories do you hold within your bones? In your heart? In your soft tissues? on the surface and deep within. Oh my gosh, that kind of like matched up. <laughs> um, like the last, like the dust to onyx, it brings you back to the body and the stories that are hold and that are within. And it also asks like, are you acquainted with your power? Are you fully aware of the power that you possess? And how are you using it? And are you ready? Can you get ready? What deities want to speak to you? What energy is flowing through you? What gateway gateways are you are you passing through? And what are you learning from them? This deck for me, you know, when I when I use it, it's 
is very encouraging. It it helps me to when I when I say are you acquainted with your power, I feel like it it sets me right back on track to be in my divine purpose. I love this card. Any deck that's going to have I mean, not any deck because I don't know any decks that have um a rainbow lemniscate like this. Like this this is gorgeous. The only thing that would have made it better if it was card 88. <laughs> but, you know, you can't have it all. That's not true. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this deck, I feel like it... <sighs> it brings me back firmly into my purpose and into my visions, into my passions and my abilities and my stories, it, it really gets the momentum going again. It feels like a cosmic, I was gonna say hug, affirmation, emboldening. Like it feels very empowering and emboldening coming from a very deep place that you know and you you know you feel it like it's very much it's you it's kind of it's like your higher self showing you and helping you become all that you're meant to be that's what that deck feels like for me um we have a few more decks um which i'm going to get through um quite quickly one two three four five yeah so i think we're moving a little no actually the pace is good the pace is good i'm happy with it the next deck that I have is the um, Outgrow Yourself Oracle and Tarot. Um, this deck, I feel like the reason why I chose it, well, yeah, the reason why I put it here on the more supportive side of things is because, you know, while some of the messages can be quite um, intense and confronting, a lot of them are very encouraging. And... I don't know, with this image of this person at the center, it always feels like you can do it. Whatever it is, you can do it. And I'm here to sort of let you know. And it's like a supportive friend that tells you the truth. I think I've said this before. Like tells you, you know, tells you the truth. And... The truth has more than just, you know, you're not, you're not being disciplined enough, you know, or you're, you know, you ha you're not clear with yourself. That's, you know, that's truth, if that's the case for you. But what's also true is you have so many skills that you've cultivated. You work, you're such a hard worker, you know, you're, you're such a bright light or, you know, so many people have been blessed by your presence and the things that you say and do for them. You know, it tells you the truth on, in all the ways, you know? So that that's what I feel like this deck is. It's, you know, it has that sort of dark aesthetic, you know, with the black backgrounds and this um, sometimes like intense imagery. But with that handwritten, with the handwritten nature of it, that's what makes it feel very personable. Um, you know, and it doesn't feel like an attack. It feels like an encouragement and empowerment and emboldening. Yeah, I feel like that's maybe the, 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 the theme here with this half of the decks. You know, like this, what is keeping you caged for the Princess of Cups? Like caged, like being, keeping, uh, that's just such an intense idea to be caged in something or somewhere. But at the same time, this image, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like that intensity. It feels more, you know, you're, there's these birds, you can get out of it and look at you. You look, if this is you, if that's how you read it, which I do, I kind of put myself in the position of this person. Um, but it feels like, you know, it's really about what you can learn from that as opposed to, you know, sort of scaring you in any kind of way. But, um, 
You know, but then again, sometimes it's a little bit intense, like daggers in your back and you're bleeding. Stop resisting progress. <laughs> you know? Stop resisting progress. Come on. Like, it's like your friend. Like, just kind of like, hey, 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 hey. Progress is happening. Stop resisting it. You're hurting yourself by not going with the progress that is happening, you know? It's very friendly. Very nice. Very kind. <clears throat> On drop decks. Like me. So this next deck is the Iris Oracle. I think this deck could go either way. For some, this might be a really confronting, intense deck. For me, it's so comforting. <laughs> but like I said, I think this is because of my long-term work around trauma and abuse and a lot of the, you know, very intense unpleasant traumatic things that I've experienced um a deck like this whenever I get a card that feels you know which you know it's an it gives a lot of accuracy and so whenever I'm receiving a card even if it's a very like negative emotion or something that's um you know hard to look at it feels affirming because it's like it shows me something that I'm aware of and I get to, it sees me in that way. And so I really appreciate that about this deck. It goes very deep and it touches on topics that, like I said, very, for me, a lot around trauma and, you know, shame and unworthiness and things like that. You know, I, I just find, it's just here to love you, but love you through these really, these really hard things. Um, for me, this deck, I mean, if I was to say this deck in one word, it would be, it would be trauma. I feel like it's a very, um, it's a companion through, through dealing with trauma. But it's also a very balanced deck in the sense that there's a lot of really beautiful, celebratory, you know, exciting, um, and caring, comforting, nurturing cards, you know? Like this next card, share tenderness. I love that. And the images, because I think the reason why it's so well suited for trauma, specifically childhood trauma, because of the way that it's drawn. It, it's like crayons and colored, I think it's like colored pencils mostly, at least from what it looks like to me. But yeah, I think that aspect of it, it gives a very kinesthetic, childlike feel. Um, but the images, because they, and, and the titles are so specific, they're not keywords, they're very specific to that emotional, psychic experience of grief and loss around trauma. So I think it's quite deep in that way, but it's very supportive to, you know, walk with you on that path and help you to you know, breathe through dealing with what has happened and helping you process it, you know, in your own way, in the unique way that you are unique and your experiences are unique. Yeah, the Iris Oracle, I think it's, it's a very beautiful, kind, I mean, this, I just find it to be so kind, almost, not almost, in the creation of it, especially with the deck saying, I love you on the inside. That's what it feels like. It feels like what that, what the deck was made to do for those of us who have had some really, what they call it, uh, adverse childhood experiences or something like that, um, for, for, you know, for those of us with childhood drama. It's like, you're loved, you know? I'm here for you. And yeah, so, like this card, I really love this. I don't get this card enough. I think this would be a great deck. You know, instead of pulling a card, which I think can be, you know, maybe a little bit too intense at times, I think it'd <clears throat> be a really good idea. Um, of course, you have to go through the whole deck to do it, but if there's a card that you know 
has you know stuck out to you at any point or if you go through the I wonder is there a table of contents actually because that might be a helpful way I don't know if there is though no there isn't um but you know point is I think it'd be a good deck to work with a specific card um to choose a card as opposed to let a card come out I think it'd be a great way to intentionally work with that energy um, and for our last three, I'm going to neck this for this one. <laughs> See, this should tell you a lot. So this deck, before I open it, I'll actually show you. It's the Triumphi de la Luna, which I love. But, and this is the Paradoxical. And I have a <laughs> sticky note in there. It says, I am the healing power. So that should tell you. It's a very like strange deck. You know, we've all seen it, so I won't spend too much time on it. I want to shuffle it too. There's something about some of these decks that I just want to shuffle. Um, but yeah, I find this deck to be... It's a little bit weird, but I like with all the eyes, with the darkness of it, and the weird characters. It can be a little bit like uncomfy and just... It's, I think it's less creepy than the Deviant Moon, but then again, I have never had the Deviant Moon, so I wouldn't fully know. I think it just, it has this darkness about it and weirdness about it, like strangeness, off, offness, um, which I think is what kind of puts it in this category for me. Um, it it suits itself but uh, to this sort of darker energy but it suits itself to kind of go in any direction that you want it to and for me I find it to be supportive uh, in that dark place um, I think I've said this before um, that with this deck I have created some characters I've given them some names and a little bit of backstory and so for that reason I feel like um, not for that reason but with that additional feature I feel like the deck can be for me quite supportive in s storytelling or restorying my own life and sort of seeing it through the narrative or the world the world and the narratives that exist within the triumphi de la luna i find i think i know anna from astral lady tarot has I, she says uh there's a whole she's created a whole i believe astral realm Please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to say anything incorrectly, but I know she talks about having an entire realm, which makes a lot of sense. I feel like it just, it automatically suits itself to being like, who are these people and what's going on in their world? Like it's, it's different than mine. Like for me, I'll, tell, I'll give you an example. This is Sensato Plumspire <laughs> and he's, he's a, you know, he's a little bit conniving, <sighs> you know, he, yeah, he just has this, he's for himself in a lot of ways. And so he tends to, while he has some upright qualities, he doesn't always use them in the right, in the right way or in the most uh, benevolent way, put it that way. And I can't think of their names in this moment because it's been a while since I've worked with this deck, but each of these little beings have a name. And yeah, so, and I love the fact that it's, you know, has a Marseille style, uh, format it's it gives a very straightforward uh, read so yeah I've, you know maybe this is kind of the odd one out but it's it just feels the the strangeness uh, lends itself to being more supportive uh, as opposed to disturbing I find that It's a world that sort of opens up to you and allows you to explore what you want to explore while inserting this cast of characters and uh, elements that you can kind of shift and move in a way that uh, suits your particular situation. But it's not going to act like it's not dark. It's not going to pretend to be something that it's not, which is a regular regular deck. It is in the dark. 
we are by the light of the moon right now so you never know what you're going to find and i would say these last two decks <laughs> i kind of find that i'm going in an order of like most and least supportive um and i i kind of led up to the darkest not darkest but most uh deep and dark and intense deck with the goetia and i feel like i'm kind of leaning towards the most supportive uh for me so this next deck is um i feel like the aesthetic it kind of gives this gothic aesthetic at least to me i know gothic means kind of something specific and then goth is another thing but it's kind of not another thing but anyway this is the la flora tarot i think this is currently out of print if i'm not mistaken um but it's you know it's a grayscale deck and so while it's all based on plants, I find the aesthetic of it and even the way that it's written because it has this sort of um, botanical, I would say, I don't even like saying botanical because sometimes botanical gets taken as a little bit more of like a frilly thought. Maybe that's just me. Um, but the way that the guidebook is written and the way that these images are made is that there's more than meets the eye. We're not looking at the colors and the beauty necessarily of we're looking at the beauty but we're not looking at uh the way that they look in real life we are looking at them as far as their history the way that they've been used and we are looking at them in a tarot sense well in a tarot through the tarot lens and i love that i don't have all the alternate cards but i do have i love that there's an all black card there's an all white card there's a card that says like luck love and oh, something else and then there's um the La Flora person but yeah I think this deck it's it suits itself to pair with it has a very serious quality to it it's a serious deck it's you know you like I said you would think because it's like flowers and plants that it's it's not that serious or it's a little bit more playful which I guess it can be but that's not the intention or sort of the energy with this deck it's it's very much um if you want to go deep we can go deep if you want to talk about it let's talk about it let's take it way way back and for me i like to look one thing that i'm very inspired by is plant morphology so the way that sort of the plants look and the like sort of visual physical elements of the plant and so when I take that into account with the, I mean, because it makes you look into a plant, at least for me. Every time I pull a card, I'm going to look up, you know, I'm going to find one that I can actually name here. Am I going to? Whatever. <laughs> look at the, the common name. Cobra Lily. So for this Ace of Pentacles, I'm going to look up the Cobra Lily and I'm going to look at, um, what the cobra lily looks like and i'm going to read the guidebook and i'm going to you know usually there's some historical imagery a uh, you know quote conversation about uses some keywords and um some divinatory message around that and so for me there's there's multiple aspects coming in it's multifaceted it makes you do a little bit of research and if you don't, it's still going to present you with some information, some, and like, scientific information about this plant. And it's given it to you in a very straightforward, undistracted by color. Which tells me a lot. If you're going to have a plant deck that is undisturbed by color, which is a main feature of a lot of these flowers, like... What we love about flowers is their varied color. They're varied. They're they're just so beautiful and they captivate the senses. And so if you're going to take that away, that's going to tell me a lot about what you're trying to communicate with these plants. Um, like let's let's really get scientific about it. Let's not be distracted by beauty. Let it be a feature, but let it not be the main feature. Let it not take you off track to what we're really here to do, which is to learn and to see. So that's what I feel about the um, La Flora. My personal take, I'm definitely curious as well if for those of you who have worked with this deck, especially because on the inside of the box it does say like make it lucky. Uh, oh yes, it's hope, faith, love, and luck. 
and it has, you know, the four leaf clover. So it is very much about luck and making your own luck, um, which I love about it. So for the last deck, the last deck on this list, thank you for hanging in with me. If you are still here, um, you know what? Why don't you leave a flower in the in your comment so that I know that you made it all the way to this point um, in the in the video. I don't know why I want to shuffle so bad. Um, but this last deck is trimmed. It's the Dark Goddess Tarot. I've trimmed this deck to just the just the goddesses. Um, yeah, you know, it's the Dark Goddesses. So for that reason, we are in we are firmly in the underworld in the dark, and we are learning about you know the not so uh, sweet side of the goddess. Um, yet at the same time, the reason why this deck is not in the confronting and disturbing and, you know, difficult side of the video is because for me, I find working with the goddess, you, you know, the dark goddess to be very empowering and not so much disturbing or uncomfortable. For me, even in these stories where, you know, some really dark shit going on, I don't feel out of my depth. I don't feel confronted. I feel, um, I feel informed and empowered. I feel in the presence of such a powerful energy. And so for me, yeah, that's why I would put this deck here. Um, I love it so much. Sometimes I kind of regret not having the, um, the title, I mean like the tarot titles on it. Um, because then I kind of cease to use it as a tarot deck, really. I kind of use it as a... Well, I do use it as a tarot deck, but I kind of use it more as an oracle. And, you know, the goddess is a main feature and not at the same time. Uh, it's really about the message that comes through. But, yeah, I just... I find... I mean, and especially the artwork as well. I think the artwork plays a role in this deck not being necessarily uh, as confronting because it has such a, you know, liveliness and colorfulness to it. It's, it's not really there, like, say, Hayworth, for example. You know, plenty of color in that deck, you might say. Some really bright reds and oranges and some beautiful greens. Um, but it's not the the what is drawn is actually meant to be difficult to look at whereas in these no, nothing about it is really difficult to look at and so just based on the visually based on the artwork we're not here to sort of trigger anything within you we're here to um inspire empower and um yeah i would say empower very much and yeah i love this deck i love the guidebook as well and, you know, it does also call you to research, so it calls you to sort of dig deep, to make connections maybe with deities and stories that you may not have connected with. Anything dealing with myth and storytelling for me is a very deep um, and sometimes dark thing because, um, you know, in every good story there is, you know, some sort of villain, some sort of challenge, some sort of um, difficulty and... A dark part of yourself that you have to confront uh, in order to progress. So, <laughs> so yeah, that is the Dark Goddess to La Llorona. I know this is the Five of Cups, though, for sure, right? You're that's definitely the Five of Cups. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll just show one more Lilith as well. That is the list. That's the list of all of the decks that are deep, dark, disturbing, and, you know, here to support you, challenge you on, um, on your journey into the, into the deep as you go, and into the underworld, into your own shadows and mysteries, and, uh, sometimes it's going to be, uh, quite difficult, and it's going to really challenge your, uh, sense of self, and sometimes it's going to lift up your, uh, lift you up and you know take you somewhere either way you're going somewhere uh the question is what's the path you're going to take 
so thank you for joining me also thank you for I think it's quite kind of ironic that I have this uh, teddy bear here to to uh, join us on this journey <laughs> kind of some sweet energy to balance out the dark I don't know if you can hear my neighbors doing their lawn I hope it's not too disturbing but you know we got to keep on keeping on as we do and uh, I'm so thankful for you joining me. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on these decks and uh, maybe any decks that maybe you would put here that uh, I don't have or I haven't put. Um, I would love to know your thoughts and um, I'm so grateful that you're here. I love you dearly and I'll see you in my next video.